And now, some quick thoughts from man. Well, it's about that time again. I give my impressions on some anime shows I either missed or just didn't feel needed a full video dedicated to it. We'll even be looking at some pilots, so get yourself some popcorn, a soda, juice, blood, or whatever type of drink you prefer. I don't know, I'm not your stomach. Let's dive right in. Okay, I feel a little bad. I'm not doing a full video on this, but honestly, I just couldn't. And that's not to be indicative of it being a bad show. Quite the opposite, it's good. It's just, it's the same as Bob's Burgers. By that I mean in terms of humor and feel, it just has that Bob's Burger essence all over it. You got awkward characters who are funny because of that, people who are weird that annoy those characters, and jokes that easily could go into Bob's Burgers. The two big difference here for this series though are the animation and the music. The animation has more going for it that makes it more visually stimulating than Bob's. Characters have more fluidity to them and it's very nice to actually witness. And it goes well with the musical sequences, which are the biggest highlights. They feel like you're watching musical theater, which makes plenty of sense because the cast is made of people with Broadway backgrounds. If anything, this series feels like Bob's Burgers fully realized with the music being something I would actually want on my playlist. I'm sorry, I just couldn't get into Bob's songs. They just kept having songs that were sung by people that aren't the best at singing, with the exception of a few but just overall is not that pleasant to the ear. I'm sorry, man. If they had better singers, I'd be more inclined to think that Bob's Burgers had some great songs, but I really only could like a few, and that's usually when they had an actual professional singer. Sorry. The characters are all fun, but like I said, they feel like they fit in a little too much with Bob's Burgers. They have the quirky awkwardness to them that can be enjoyable, but going off of almost 10 years of Bob Burgers now, you might be feeling a bit tired of that style, especially since it looks exactly like it. It may be worse here because the characters tend not to emote as much as they should be. When they sing this big musical number, or any type of musical number, they end up having these very neutral faces that can kinda take you out of the moment. Even though it's a catchy song, or it has a lot of vocal emotion behind it. I just keep looking at their faces and I keep thinking, you don't look like how you feel. And you're singing these big emotional songs, like, you gotta put some real oomph into your face, you know? Maybe it's just a personal gripe, but I feel it is a genuine problem. It by no means is a bad show, just very familiar, maybe a bit more refined than Bob's Burgers. I do recommend it if you want to hear some good songs that are reminiscent of musical theater with nice fluid visuals to go along with it. <sighs> y'all just, y'all just gotta have something completely weird under your belt, don't you adult swim? Like, what do you say to something like this? It just feels foul. Can't connect to the characters like at all. They just feel like they're there for that one episode, then they're gone the next. Just there to serve a role, which isn't a bad thing. You know, you can have one-off characters, but definitely should make them interesting enough for me to care about any of the things that happen to them. And the animation just has this very limited quality that I can't tell was for budget reasons or just because they wanted to imitate South Park. Either way, it's rough. They have this movement where jumping around while their bodies are still for their walking animation like in South Park, but it doesn't mesh at all with the fact that the characters have a bit more definition to them. It just feels so off. It has random flashes that occur on the screen and I didn't bother to see what they were saying or what they were showing because then I'd have to put in effort to see what it is and I really, really didn't feel like it. Then it also has to have that typical brand of over the top violence just for the sake of it. No rhyme or reason, it's just gotta have it. Man, does it feel exhausting to see this crap. They literally have a moment where a character gets killed and I'm talking fully mutilated like burnt to a crisp and then they're just perfectly fine the next second. And I'm like, e okay, this clearly was supposed to be about surreal visuals but it just doesn't work since they want to tell these old fairy tales but now with a dark twist which makes no goddamn sense because a lot of the original fairy tales are already dark. It was only stuff like Disney that gave them the happy endings, so it just feels pointless. Like nobody needed this at all. If you just want dark tellings of classic fairy tales, just read the grim fairy tales. This is just not something you need to be wasting your time with. You know, this was a cute little pilot. I enjoyed the slice of life aspect of it, but 
I will admit that's what holds me back a bit from wanting to see it as a full series. The characters have a fun dynamic between them, but it kind of falls in with your typical brother-sister combos. They're fun and all and look out for each other when things get a bit rough, but just falls into that been there done that spiel. It even has the kids imagine themselves in a fantasy land, which I don't know, once you got Craig of the Creek, you don't really need that element, you know? They already have a show where kids fantasize about these kind of fantastical things and such, so this just doesn't feel as strong, especially since Craig actually has an actual location basing its imaginations off of, whereas this is just the kid makes it up as he goes and he just fantasizes about having to beat trolls or something. It's like, okay, I guess. But it just reigns a bit hollow to me. The dad has a bit of a likability to him with his want for his store to be as legendary as he says he wants. Also not getting mad his kids deliver the food late, but I don't really have a big want to see him after this. Honestly, I don't have a big want to see any of these characters after this. The animation still has that typical Cartoon Network style that holds it back a lot. It's a bit reminiscent of regular show with more polish, which looks nice, but it will linger in the back of your mind that yeah, this just very much feels like regular show. Plus, it's kinda odd that the characters have this red coloring to their skin, where other characters are perfectly fine in skin tone, save for a few. It just makes them feel like they were in the sun way too long. It's ultimately harmless, but a series might not need to happen for this. I really could not find myself wanting to sit around and watch this for too long. This series is honestly just there. It's not visually interesting, characters don't really bring much to the table in terms of personality. It plays like a filler series that's there for a time slot. The premise seems slightly interesting, but overall it works as just background noise. It's pretty easy to lose interest in what's going on. It has a lot of that typical Canadian this is what I think kids act like humor that just falls pretty flat. Because you've seen these characters and just think, man, do they feel pretty manufactured. It's not horribly offensive, but it's very flavorless. This is definitely one I shouldn't have been waiting on. It kind of has a feel of that 70s show, but with more edge to it, but not so much edge that it's grating. Plus, it's also animated, so that kind of helps differentiate it a lot. The family dynamic can get you hooked pretty quickly, mainly due to Frank being a pure rage machine. At first, you would think, Jesus, what an asshole. But as you watch, you see he's a sympathetic asshole. His anger comes from his own struggles with not feeling like he's a good provider for his family. You can easily get where he's coming from. His family itself you might feel scared for, but you realize they aren't in any danger or anything. They just have a loudmouth father slash husband. They all actually feel like realistic depictions of a family going through a bit of rough times. Not so rough they're close to the poorhouse, but just in that lower middle class bracket and being stuck in the 70s suburbia, you know. The comedy actually gets genuine laughs out of me with how you can just relate to the characters' reactions to things. You can see how if you were in these situations, you probably have the same reactions. But the show can have moments to reel things in and have some serious moments of reflection and clarity for the characters, even having genuine sweet moments of good family bonding. It feels nice, honestly. It just feels real, even though it's a cartoon. It's definitely a show I regret not getting into back when it started, but I'm rectifying that now. And I suggest you do the same if you've been missing out on it as well. Oh uh, god. Why was this made? I get that Trump is a walking sack of dung filled with orange chicken, but was this really what we needed? The only show that works with being made out of frustration with the current political climate was American Dad, and that's mostly because it wasn't about just the election and current presidential administration. It made jokes that span most of America's history and its present. And even then, it kinda got away from that. It was having moments where it would just make fun of conservatives in some way, shape, or form, but sometimes they just broke away and decided to do its own thing. And here, it's just like, hey, let's keep making fun of this current president. We won't date ourselves to the point it's like this isn't even watchable a few years down the line. Hell, it's not even fucking watchable now. This crap fest just plain hurt. 
every joke you could think of they did like these were so plain obvious to make and they did it anyway the characters are just caricatures they just feel so silly are plain gross to look at everyone is just so ugly and feels so childish which is ironic because i know a child would probably have much better political wherewithal than this doesn't help that the characters are spoofs of people nobody likes there's no one to latch onto and you wish they all get impaled. It gets so far up its own ass that you feel your brain dead by the end of it. I just kept thinking to myself as I watch, when does it end? When does this hell end? It depresses me just about as much as the actual Trump's administration. And I just gotta say fuck you for trying to make me think Trump and Melania's relationship is romantically engaging. We all know he got it from some mail order bride website so spare me with this garbage of making Trump an engaging character. It's like this scene in Vice where Dick Cheney and his wife were citing poetry to each other. It just makes you squirm in your seat you feel so fucking gross. It's that uncomfortable. There's probably far better political satire shows to watch. This one needs to get impeached immediately. Now this feels like my kind of show. Pure zaniness, a world unlike our own with a bit of story to go with it, all wrapped up with some great sketchy animation. Like it was just made for me. They have these very fun action sequences that can just be the purest eye candy. Like God does this look good with how fluid it is. And the comedy works very well with this animation, particularly with sight gags. I'm always a fan of animated shows that have very well made animation just for a gag. It just adds more of an impact to the joke, making it all the more funnier. Seven being so incompetent at his job just adds to the enjoyability of the show. He seems like a guy that could be doing something else but goes with this whole be an assassin thing just because he wants to look cool. Also uncovers past, but mostly the former. Let's face it, he's just a guy who's kind of going through the motions. It kind of reminds me of No More Heroes a bit because of the slight satirical nature to it about this type of genre. I honestly wasn't expecting the show to have sincere moments in it, at least not so early as the second episode. Like there's this semi heartbreaking story between a dog and a cat with the dog breaking up with the cat just because they can't breed. It sounds really silly, but it's played pretty tragic when you think about the dogs motivation being that he couldn't give the life to his significant other that they deserve like it's it's so gut-wrenching but still a well-made series with some strong elements that give a lot of charm the world is odd but intriguing you have stuff like robots and talking dogs and penguins you kind of want to go exploring in it just to see what else there is i always love that type of show or just movie having these fantasy worlds that make me want to just take a casual stroll through it the animation is great, the characters are great, the storytelling is great, it's just plain great. So I say give it a watch when you can. And that's the end. Thanks for joining me. Like, comment, and make sweet love to that subscribe button. And always remember, it's just a thought.